So I'm not making this video to call anyone out, to attack anybody, anything like that. I'm here to express my feelings and get everything out of my chest to kind of explain what's going on in my feelings on what's going on with cross tag battle right now. Okay. So if you guys don't know about the controversy cross tag battle, where have you been? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure you all know about it, but if you guys don't know, I'll be explaining the whole situation, all the information that I found out, the research that I've done and also my thoughts and feelings about the current situation and probably what's going to be happening with this game right now that now that this has happened. So if you guys don't know, there was a recent stream in Japan um, was the Arc System Award show and they do a bunch of prizes for players and they play tournaments for Blaze Moon Guild to get all that good stuff. And they after all that, they revealed a cross tag battle trailer, which had a lot of information for us. They had a release date for Japan and for America, May 31st being in Japan and June 6th or 5th being in America. They revealed the roster size for the whole game, 40 characters, including DLC, which is a pretty big roster, to be honest. It's pretty beefy. That's the amount of characters that Blaze Blue Central Fiction has, which is a lot. So there's that, and there's also the Blake, Blake reveal, and that reveal was great. She looks fantastic. She looks beautiful. I think she's looking awesome. I cannot wait to play her. But here's where all the controversy kind of starts, okay? So there's 40 characters in the game. Right now, 20 has been revealed. It seems that from what's being portrayed right now, the information that's being relayed to us, it seems that the roster has been divided. 20 characters are going to be in the base game and 20 characters are going to be DLC characters, including Blake. Blake is going to be DLC alongside Yang. Okay, They haven't said that Yang is going to be DLC, but... That it's pretty obvious that they're going to be making Yang into a DLC character, which means two things, okay? Which means that they have split the initial four of the Ruby casts into, <laughs> into basically they split in half for the sake of money. So you have to pay money for you to use two of the most anticipated characters in the game, okay? Including Blake and Yang. And Yang, Yang is the one of the main characters that people want to see they want to try out she's one of the most popular requested characters that people want to see play all that good stuff she people love that character okay so there's that and the other thing is that, which means that when you buy the game you're going to be getting 10 blaze blue characters four persona characters four uniel characters and two count them one two ruby characters so yeah and that's where it all kind of starts from there okay the dlc portion and the ruby cast being split in half let's talk about it oh well let's before i get into my my thoughts and and stuff the, the the information that i have uh the pricing information for the japanese version they also revealed that they revealed that the game is going to be not going to be full price it's it's going to be at least for the Jap japanese versions the japanese version is going to be 5300 yen for a digital download and 5,800 yen for a physical copy of the game, which is a cheaper price. And that equ uh, equals, I don't know how much in US dollars, probably like 50 bucks, $48, whatever. So we don't have any information for the uh, English version or the American version of the game, any pricing information, but people are speculating, people are thinking and trying to see what's going on. So they're saying, people are speculating that the game is going to be $40, and have a $20 season pass for the rest of the 20 characters, okay? That's what people are, are saying, okay? There's that, mm -hmm. and there's also the DLC, how it's going to be kind of released, or how it's going to be uh, done. It's going to be six packs of three characters, and going to be two individual packs for two individual characters. And I'm pretty sure that's Blake and Yang, of course. And the three other packs, or, or the six other packs with three characters are going to be different characters from different franchises. And they can, that, that's, what, that's what I'm thinking they might do. But I, in the end, I think it's a stupid idea. But yeah, that is that. The six packs of three characters and two individual ones. I'll link all the information in the description below, by the way. So there's that. And the, with the release date being four and a half months away from release... I feel like you can reveal 
20 characters, including two Ruby characters, which are not easy, not expensive, and definitely time consuming to do to <coughs> make those sprites. Because that's what a lot of people don't realize. The Blaze Blue characters, the Unio and the Persona, are a lot easier to make than the Ruby characters. The, the Persona and the Blaze Blue character, all they do is basically copy paste, tweak a few things, and that's it. Unio characters are a bit different than that. They have to kind of tweak their sprites and then tweak their move sets and then call it a day. Ruby characters are different because they make them from scratch. They're expensive to do. They're hard to make. and they, Well, not hard to make, but they're expensive to do and time consuming. So I understand that. So, because of that, I feel like they can release all 20 characters before the game's launch. That being said, if they still go with the, pro the, the model of 20 characters, when you buy the game, like you have the game on hand, you can only play with 20 characters. Then you have to access the internet for you to, to buy 20, different 20 other characters in forms of packs or just all at once if you want for more money, Okay. Which, in my opinion, oh, okay, we'll get into my opinions in a little bit, but let me just keep going here. So, yeah, so that's another thing as well. It just makes doesn't make any sense that they would stick to this model without people being in outrage and all that stuff. The only thing I can think of that the reason why they would do something like that with have all the characters revealed and having the base roster like this, I can think of only one thing that they have in mind for doing it like this, and that is money there's only two reasons why you would ever announce dlc before the game is actually released and that's if you need enough if you need time to finish the characters which in this case i don't think it's even a problem in my opinion the only thing that could be a problem is probably the ruby characters like i said before but anything else not an issue i don't believe it. i don't buy it okay you can't convince me um i'm pretty sure they have plenty of time to finish this game before it actually launches if they still go with that that model, it makes no sense unless the second thing that I was going to say, the only, the only other reason they would do this is money. You will pay a cheaper price. Yes, you'll pay like $40, $50. I personally feel it's going to be $50 over here in America. And then you pay $20 or $30 for a season pass. Then for the sake of money. That's all I'm saying, man. It's either going to be because of time or money, which I think is greedy scummy i hate it man it's stupid it's a stupid uh, business model it's dumb it's stupid okay so anyways let's go into my feelings on this whole subject you can already get the idea of where i'm going with this or how i feel about it but let's go into depth or why i feel this way okay let's start off with blake being a dlc character okay when i first saw it i was shocked i really was at why uh, why would Arc System do something like this? I would expect this certain sort of stuff to come from Capcom because they are the king of putting cool characters away as behind DLC doors. So now that they've kind of like toned down the DLC shenanigans from Capcom, I feel like Arc System Works kind of picked up the slack that Capcom dropped and they're like, oh, we should do we should put this in our game. Yes, DLC characters, silhouettes, oh yes, all these things. So I feel like they, they're not doing it, and it's stupid. All this is doing is causing a commotion. All this is doing is causing people to go in an uproar. It's going to hurt the fan base, and it's going to feel like they're literally bitch-slapping us across the face. Okay, That's what it feels like. Because if you're going to be making a game that's a crossover game, a game that basically screams to be a fan service type of game, why are you not listening to the fans? It makes no sense to me. Now, I've heard the argument of, well, you think that Arc System Works listens to people? Look at the whole commotion they caused with the BBCF dub. Look at all the commotion. Boycotting, picket fences, torches, pitchforks, all the sorts. Which I say, all right, valid point. But at the same time, those were diff that's a different situation. Okay, Dubs are different than DLC. Dubs are different. They, they weren't... They weren't going to do a dub for BBCF and they weren't going to change their minds because, number one, they have to pay more money for the actors to come on in. It takes a lot more time. And they're not going to do it that way, okay? Plus, that's something that might be beyond their control. I said might. They might. Whatever. That whole situation is in the past. Now it's different, all right? This is gameplay related. They can do whatever the hell they want. This is literally just them being greedy. 
So they can literally, they don't have to pay anything. They don't have to do anything. All they have to do is drop this whole DLC shenanigans and they just release the 40 characters if they're as the main roster. It, that's all they need to do. That's stupid. That's, this is way, way in their control. Okay. This is not beyond their control. This is them being stupid and greedy if they go down this path. So that being said, Blake being DLC is dumb because you're splitting four characters that are going to be one of the biggest selling points of the game and let's face the facts the ruby side of this game is going to be a huge selling point of the game most people are going to be getting this game just because of ruby okay that's where all most of the casual fans are going to be going into and putting away blake and yang two of the most lovable characters and the four main characters of the whole roster especially yang Yang is such a popular, requested, want to see character in this game that's ridiculous. So many people love that character. Now you're putting her behind DLC doors. <sighs> people from outside of the anime fighting game community are also causing a ruckus. And they're also disagreeing with this practice. It's just stupid. It's just dumb. So that being said, why would they do something like this? Why would they put away Blake and Yang, characters that should have been there in the first place, right? Making an even four for everybody. Of course, 10 Blaze Blue, two, four Persona, four Uniel, four Ruby. Sounds like a good idea to me. I think that would have, you know, would have been much better than what it is right now, okay? It still would have caused a commotion, but still it would have been much better, okay? That's a step in the right direction. The only reason I can ever think of why they would do something like this is one reason okay before I get into that reason let me give you an example Smash Brothers has a bunch of really cool DLC characters including Bayonetta Cloud and other things like that other characters that are really cool and I know a lot of people family members friends that play that game casually for fun like a ton like a lot more than me and I tell them like dude you know that there's cloud in the game from Final Fantasy 7 Bayonetta from Bayonetta and they tell me, oh, yeah, I know that. that. Yeah, they're cool. I'm not going to pay money for them, though. That's okay. Of course, there's other people, like, if they love them enough and they like them enough, they'll spend the cash to get those characters. But that's not the point. Having that mentality, I think Arc System is aware of this. And because of that, this is what they're... The, this might not be their, their actual intention, but they're sure making it out to be this way. The only reason why they would put Blake and Yang behind DLC paid doors is for money why in the hell would ruby fans pay for blaze blue uniel and other other characters why would they pay for those characters if they don't know them unless they had two of their characters blake and yang behind alongside with them i bet you anything if they put in blake and yang in the initial roster and put like 18 different characters as dlc blaze blue union persona they would not even give a rat's ass about those characters i'm not spending money on those characters i have all the characters i need right here ruby yang weiss and blake bam that's it now because of that they put in blake and yang they split up the team team ruby behind closed dlc doors the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, man, that is greedy. That's stupid. There's no other reason why they would do that. No other reason. And the other reason, like I told you, was time. And I don't think that's even, uh, I don't think that's even re relevant right now because they have plenty of time to release all characters and be finished with all characters. You know, so it's not going to be free because if it was free, they'd be like, okay, we need some more time. Here's an early beta of the game. Bam, go crazy for Evil Japan or Evil or something like that. Which, in the first place, I also think is stupid because if you want to do that, why not do like every other game that you've done and get a pre-order thing going on? You can pre-order the game. If you pre-order the game, you get a beta or a demo of the game, which includes versus, training, challenges, whatever, until you can officially release the game later down the line in September or in August, whatever. Be finished with the game. It's stupid. It's stupid. People, I've heard people say some stuff like, I've heard people, oh man, this is running really long. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I heard people say something like, well, don't worry about it. The game's going to be $40. You're basically paying for a game that's um, that's early access to the game, pretty much. And that's stupid because let me tell you something. The last game that, ha that did that, the last two games that did that that I can think of, they fell flat on their faces. Okay. 
One being Street Fighter V, two being Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. There's a reason why I never bought Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and there's a reason why I dropped Street Fighter V. Because they were unfinished, unpolished games. They should have waited, put more characters in, and be more polished and be more confident in their game. That's just my opinion, and I feel like if they go down this path, this game is going to be meeting the same fate, okay? Do you remember the last game that was similar to, to Cross Tag Battle that included DLC? It was a 2v2 crossover fighting game. Do you remember? Do you, does anybody remember Street Fighter Cross Tekken? Do you know where that game is right now? In the trash. And that's why I'm so sad about this whole situation. I feel like this whole situation with cross tag battle, me being the, a person where you better believe every time you talk to me, every time you, you any anything that has to do with me and cross tag battle, whether you come to the channel, to YouTube or to Twitch, anytime you talk to me about cross tag battle, I'm happy to talk about it. I can talk about it for hours and all that stuff. I am very because the game was going to be just a game for made for fans. And now that this has happened, I don't. I feel like I cannot talk about it in the same way as before because I don't have 100% backing up of this game just because of this business model. And I know a lot of people are like, why would you ever... It sucks that people are looking at this game from a DLC perspective when the game is awesome. The game is going to be great. You're right about that. The game is going to be great, but it's backed up by people that are complete assholes about this whole situation. If they really want to make a game for fans, they would just release the whole roster as 40 characters. Anything beyond that will be DLC, and I'll be willing to throw money at them. I will throw Benjamins straight at their face, okay? It's the matter of... The thing that pisses me off is the matter of splitting the initial base rosters. These are not new characters. The only new characters are Ruby and, and Yang, and those are expected to be in the game. They're expected. So it makes no sense. It makes no sense. I think it's dumb. I think it's stupid if they do go down this path. And I hope they retract it. They think about it. I hope we create enough backlash for them to, you know, back, you know, back their statement up of DLC. They should rethink what DLC is. Arc System Works is such a, like, is rooted so heavily in arcades that they've been doing this for years and years. And now that they have the limelight of being a console exclusive, this is what happens. And it saddens me because there's games like Dragon Ball Fighters, which is kicking ass right now. Dragon Ball Fighters is legit kicking ass. Sorry, I, <laughs> I saw something there. Is kicking ass. People are loving it, having fun. People are talking about it. Good publicity. Blah blah blah. I don't know, man. I I I love this game and I want to buy it and I want to support it tenfold. I'm still probably gonna buy it. I'm still probably gonna support it. But it really saddens me that I have to. I hate this, man. I really do. Blaze with Cross Tag Battle is gonna be a game that everyone's gonna love. Everyone, I could talk about it with 100% confidence. It's gonna be a great game. Even people that were on the fence about the game, I could still tell them this is gonna be a great game. This is gonna be amazing. I can't say that anymore. Cause why am I gonna say like, oh, you never played Cross Tag Battle? Who you wanna play? Oh, you play that character? Oh, that character is not available in the roster, so you have to buy him, and then to come talk to me. Why? See stuff like that. It, it's dumb, man. It really saddens me, man. It's it's mostly because this is a fan a, a game made for fans. You can't tell me otherwise. Because why would they ever do a crossover game without pleasing fans? Okay, the only game that is a crossover game that they did not please fans is definitely Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. And look at what that game is right now. It's garbage. So I don't want this game to end up that way, man. Because I love this game. I really do. It's such a great concept, like a great game. Aesthetically pleasing. It looks awesome. Cool characters. Crossover fandom. You know, it's great, man. But being in the state as it is right now, it saddens me. It really does. And I hope Arc System Works listens to us. All right. And I've heard people say, I've heard people say all sorts of things about the situation right now, but this is my take on it. Don't, don't even do DLC. That's my, that's not going to happen, but that's my dream world. Don't even do DLC outside, you know, at the beginning. 
Do not do that. It sucks. Now that they officially released Blake as DLC, there's no stopping that. And that's what makes me really, really mad. The only thing that I'm hoping for is the 20 plus characters being DLC. Uh, hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully they'll still... Hopefully it's just like a couple characters, including uh, Blake. But for the most part, Blake and Yang being DLC is confirmed. And... Arc System Works, what are you doing? What What are you doing? This is not the way that the game was supposed to be made. This is not the game that people wanted. This is a this is a game that we want to talk about with the utmost confidence that this is going to be a great game in both gameplay and in publicity and in the development team, you know? I really hope they might they retract some things and I really hope that some things get fixed before the game's released. If they have to delay the game, by god, delay it. Seriously, because it had something has to be done. I don't want to. <laughs> there, there was a comment that was like, "Okay, Arc System Works has officially created a new category, and that's called Dead by Arrival <laughs> category, DBA, <laughs> Dead by Arrival." And I don't think this is gonna officially kill the whole game, but it's definitely going to slow the hypeness, and it's going to cause a ruckus, which leads to less sales. And, yeah, that's my thought on it. I think this whole situation could have been avoidable. And now that they are in the spotlight, I hope that the back enough backlash gets created for them to rethink some of their strategies. So, thank you all for watching. I know this was a long video. I apologize. But I had to get everything that's on my mind. And if Arc System ever even hears a second of this video, please just make a game that's for the people you know but anyways guys comment below what you think of this whole situation i'll be skimming through the comments as well like the video if you think arc system works should you know put a fix on this man and stop their shenanigans and if they do go down this path leave a like if you guys think that and yeah spread the word around create enough backlash um i hope Hope enough. Hope there's enough backlash for them to listen. So, anyways, thank you all for watching once again, guys. Love you all. Hopefully, this whole thing blows over, and I hope everything goes for the best in the future, man. So, anyways, guys, we'll see you guys in the next video. I'm gonna be doing some Blaze with Cross Tag Battle breakdowns of the trailers and Blake. But yeah, that's my feelings on the whole situation. We'll see. Let's. We'll see you later. Okay.